In conventional aircraft, the movement of the control column is transferred along cables and pulleys until it reaches the control surface to be moved. In the A320 family, the cables and pulleys have been replaced by electrical wires. This has the advantage of saving weight on the aircraft. However, there are even greater advantages as the video clip will demonstrate. The electrical signals, created by side stick movement, travel through flight control computers before being passed to the surface hydraulic actuators, also named servo controls. The pilots use the side sticks to fly the aircraft. Computers interpret the pilot's inputs and move the flight control surfaces as necessary, preventing excessive maneuvers and flight outside the safe flight envelope. Pilot's input is converted into an aircraft control objective. No direct relationship between stick and surface. The aircraft is servo-looped. This has advantages over conventional systems. It makes the aircraft extremely stable, enhances safety, reduces the pilot's workload. The movements of the flight control surfaces are managed by seven computers. These are two elevator and aileron computers, ELAC, three spoiler and elevator computers, SEC, two flight augmentation computers, FAC, which manage the rudder movements. The flight control system is designed to incorporate several redundancy and safety concepts. Each computer is able to control the aircraft in flight. Each computer is divided into two physical units, which are programmed in two different software languages. Segregated power supply, control source, and signaling lanes. Extensive monitoring within each computer allows detection of failures in controls, computers, and sensors. With the basic configuration, no single failure, computer, electrical system, hydraulic system, sensors, will cause a degradation of the normal functions. Two flight control data concentrators, FCDCs, are installed. They receive data from ELAC and SEC computers for indication, recording, and maintenance purposes. The FCDC stores the maintenance data and delivers failure indications, e.g. stored failures, failure history, troubleshooting guidance, etc., as well as failed LRUs to the Centralized Fault Display Interface Unit, CFDIU. The FCDCs interface with ECAM system, surface position, computer status, surface status, and interface with the DFDR, flying parameter recording. However, the data from both facts is directly sent to the EIS. Three independent hydraulic systems are used to power all the flight control surfaces. The flight control system incorporates ailerons, each aileron is powered by two servo controls from independent hydraulic systems. In normal operation, one servo control is active through the ELAC, the other one being damped. Surface position indication is displayed on the ECAM display unit. Elevators. Each elevator is actuated by two independent hydraulic servo controls. In normal operation, one servo control is active through the ELAC, SEC in backup, the other is damped. In the event of total electrical control loss, the servo controls are automatically switched to a centering mode and will hold the surface in the neutral position. Surface position indication is displayed on the ECAM display unit. A trimmable horizontal stabilizer THS for pitch trim. 
The THS is actuated by a fail-safe ball screw jack, driven by two independently supplied hydraulic motors. Manual control of the THS is achieved through the interconnected handwheels located on the center pedestal. On the ground, the THS setting must be performed through the manual control. As soon as the aircraft is airborne, the THS automatically engages in electrical control mode. The mechanical control can override the electrical control in case of auto trim runaway. Automatic pitch trim is achieved with the THS through the ELAC. When the auto trim function is engaged, any movement of the elevators will be followed by a THS movement in order to align the surfaces for drag reduction, fuel saving. The THS position indication is displayed on the ECAM display unit and is also indicated in degrees on a scale adjacent to each trim handwheel. A rudder. The single piece rudder is actuated by three independently supplied hydraulic servo controls mechanically signaled from the pedals and the yaw damper actuators. The rudder position indication is displayed on the ECAM display unit. And finally, ground spoilers, speed brakes. Each spoiler is driven by a single servo control through one of the three secs. For redundancy, the hydraulic supply from the three systems is distributed among the spoiler's servo controls. In case of failure detected by the sec, the corresponding spoiler retracts automatically and is held in that position. The spoiler position indication is displayed on the ECAM display unit. Now let's introduce the ECAM flight control page. You can see that all the flight control surfaces we have talked about are displayed. We will now see them in more detail. The movements of both ailerons and both elevators are symbolized by a green index moving in front of a white scale. The servo control status, displayed on the side of the white scale, will become amber when the corresponding actuator is not available. Hydraulic low pressure, electrical control failure, computer failure, etc. Ailerons. The ailerons are shown in neutral position. Note. The indication below corresponds to the new neutral position when the flaps are extended. Aileron droop automatic function. Elevators. In case of elevator failure, the deflection of the remaining elevator is limited by the computer to avoid excessive asymmetrical loads on the horizontal tailplane or rear fuselage. The green rudder symbol is used as an index to display the movements of the rudder on a white scale. The servo control status is displayed on top of the rudder indication. The rudder trim is indicated by a small blue line below the scale. When used, the rudder trim will move the neutral point of the rudder surface and change the rudder pedal's position. The hydraulic systems which actuate each control surface are indicated on the ECAM flight control page by G, B, and Y. For example, the rudder is powered by the green, blue, and yellow hydraulic systems. Note that the rudder and the pedal deflections are limited via a rudder travel limiter at high speed. Rudder travel is limited as a function of airspeed. The FACs control electric motors coupled with a variable stop mechanism. The high speed position is indicated by small white ticks on the rudder scale. The pitch trim position is indicated by THS deflection in degrees up or down. The pitch trim hydraulic motor status is displayed on top of the THS position indication.
The spoilers have several functions. Speed brakes use the three central surfaces. On the ECAM flight control page, the spoiler extended position is indicated by small arrows. This is the case for the speed brakes. Speed brakes are used to decrease the aircraft's speed and to increase the rate of descent. Speed brakes inhibition. The computers will automatically retract the speed brakes or keep them retracted in the following conditions. Aircraft in high angle of attack condition. Flaps full configuration selected. Landing. Computer failure. Roll spoilers. To complement the aileron's action, the roll spoilers are deployed automatically by the computers on the same side as the aileron which is deflected upward. They remain retracted on the other wing and proportionately to this aileron deflection. The computers are able to mix the speed brakes function with the roll spoilers. Look at the video carefully. Roll control uses the four outer surfaces. On the video, look at the left spoilers as they deploy, then at the right ones as the wings are leveled. Ground spoilers use all surfaces at their maximum deflection. The ground spoilers are used to maintain the aircraft on the ground, ground lift dumper, and to reduce the speed. Ground spoilers will remain extended during bounces. Ground spoilers are automatically extended after touchdown or in case of rejected takeoff when specific ground conditions are fulfilled. Pre-selections have to be made through the speed brake control lever located on the center pedestal. They will retract when deselected with the speed brake control lever or one engine thrust lever is advanced above idle position. On the video, watch all the spoilers deploy at touchdown. The status of the ELAX and SEX is indicated on the ECAM flight control page. The other computers are not displayed. Pilots control pitch and roll through two side sticks. The side stick advantages are improved crew interface, system simplification, weight and room saving. Each side stick sends independent electrical signals to the flight controls computers. When both side sticks are used at the same time, their inputs are algebraically added by the computers. When the autopilot is engaged, both side sticks are locked in the neutral position by a solenoid system. Each side stick is fitted with a red push button, which is used for autopilot manual disconnection. Deactivation of the other stick when this push button is kept pressed to take priority in case of crew incapacitance or during flight training. For rigging purposes, the side stick can be held in neutral position by a single rigging pin. Aileron, spoiler, elevator servo control adjustments. There are associated side stick priority lights. Manual control of the THS is achieved through the interconnected handwheels located on the center pedestal. The trim position is indicated in degrees on a scale adjacent to each trim wheel. The normal range is marked by a green band. Note: Crew action on the pitch trim wheel does not disconnect the ELAX. They remain synchronized with the manually selected position. Following touchdown, the pitch trim is automatically reset to zero. When the pitch trim is engaged in electrical mode, a feedback movement is sent to the wheels via the mechanical channel. There are two sets of conventional rudder pedals. These pedals are adjustable for pilot comfort. The two sets of pedals are mechanically interconnected. When the autopilot is engaged, the rudder pedals are locked in neutral position.
A rudder trim panel is located on the pedestal. Manual trim orders are received from a switch located on the center pedestal. An automatic reset function is initiated through a push button switch and allows the trim position to be nulled. The position indicator displays the rudder trim direction, left or right, and value. The rudder trim rotary switch is not active when the autopilot is engaged, as the rudder trim is controlled by the autopilot system. A speed brake lever is located on the left side of the pedestal. To select speed brakes, the lever has to be pushed down and set to the required position. To arm the ground spoilers, the lever must be pulled up when in retracted position. Upon ground spoiler deployment, there is no movement of the lever, as it is an electrical control. In addition, there are two panels, located on the overhead panel, to control the flight control computers. Switching off, then on, resets the corresponding computer. The ELAC-1 and SEC-1 are normally supplied by the essential bus, but can be supplied by the hot bus in case of electrical failure. Now, we will introduce the lift augmentation devices. High lift control is achieved on each wing by five leading edge slats, two trailing edge flaps, one aileron, aileron droop function. Slats and flaps are driven through similar hydromechanical systems consisting of power control units, PCU, differential gearboxes and torque shafts, rotary actuators. There are five slats on each leading edge. And two flaps on each trailing edge. Note, the A321 has double slotted flaps. The slats and flaps power control units are hydraulically actuated. They are electrically controlled via two slat flap control computers, SFCC. The SFCCs monitor the slats and flaps operation through position pickoff units, PPUs, located on the PCUs and at the end of the transmission torque shafts. The slats and flaps operate with protection functions such as asymmetry, runaway, overspeed, uncommanded movement. Each FSCC has two channels, one for the flaps and one for the slats. Each channel can drive its associated surfaces. The flaps and slats information is shown on the engine warning display. The System Data Acquisition Concentrators, SDACs, receive slat and flap positions from feedback PPUs through SFCCs to generate appropriate ECAM displays. The flap and slat positions are indicated by white dots. Here, the surfaces are extended to the full position. This is the flap zero indication. Notice there is no labeling with this setting. The flap lever, located on the right side of the pedestal, operates the slats and flaps. Before selection of any position, the lever must be pulled out of the detend. Moreover, balks are provided at position 1 and 3 to avoid excessive flap-slat travel demand by a single pilot action. The flap lever has the following positions, 0, 1, 2, 3, and full. ELAC-1, SEC-1, FAC-1, and FCDC-1 are located in rack 83VU. ELAC by SEC-2, FAC-2, and FCDC-2 are located in rack 84VU. SFCC-1 
is located in rack 85VU. SFCC2 is located in rack 86VU. SEC3 is located in rack 93VU. The ELAX, SEX, and SFCC's byte memories can be read and tests triggered on the MCDU through flight control key. The facts send data to the CFDIU. Their byte memories can be read and tests triggered through the MCDU AFS menu. The ELAX and SEX send data to the CFDIU through the FCDCs. The SFCCs send data directly to the CFDIU.